Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a pretty simple card using Karen Brush Marker Pros again. I've been doing several videos with these lately and just having fun with them again. And I pulled out the Forever Yours stamp set from Simon's a Stamp. And I've already done one video using this, this set and I'll have a link to it at the end of this one if you've missed it. And this time I wanted to do, again, watercoloring, but I also wanted to do a bit of ink smushing. So I have some watercolor paper. This is Strathmore watercolor paper. I've mentioned this in all my recent videos with um, specifically Karen Brushmarker Pros. This watercolor paper is just, they go together like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> it just works. Um, as of me doing this voiceover, I think Simon's currently sold out of the smaller pack of this, but the 24 sheet pack is still available. That's what I'll have a link to. Um, yeah, really affordable watercolor paper. And for whatever reason, it just works the best with these markers. However, always experiment with what you've got. Cause you know, if you're using different inks or if you're using these markers, but you've got different watercolor papers, test it out, see what works. Because sometimes, you know, what works for me doesn't work for other people or, you know, I've seen other makers and they create these beautiful, you know, watercolors or just different things using some of the same tools, but they'll use a different, totally different type of paper or, you know what I mean? So anyway, ink smushing. I've shown this in a lot of videos too. I am using a stamp storage sleeve as my, my ink smushing sleeve. I've done videos in the past using this. I've also done videos using just like a piece of acetate. Using this sleeve is a little trick I picked up from one of Nina Marie Trapani's videos and it's brilliant. I love using the sleeve for that because this is way more flexible than using like a piece of acetate. And this is just for everyone with control issues. <laughs> Honestly, personally, I don't mind ink smushing, you know, the, the old fashioned way smushing you know inks or markers or whatever onto um, a non-porous surface spraying with water and then you press your watercolor paper or whatever you're working on into it you know so you're just kind of surprised with the results I'm fine with that I sometimes it's actually kind of fun because it's like you never know what's going to happen but this does give you a lot more control because you can see where you're putting your inks and again this will work with any water reactive type of an ink so this will work with distress inks oxide inks simon's positively saturated inks all sorts and i'm there's tons there's tons out there these markers uh, any other watercolor type of a marker will probably work too so i was just scribbling the marker onto the sleeve spraying it with water and then I smushed it onto my heat embossed image because I had heat embossed that floral image with Simon's cream embossing powder. You can't really see anything on it right now on camera, but I can see where everything is. And that's where the control comes in handy because I'm purposely smushing the colors where um, certain parts of the images are. So I'm doing the greens and the aqua colors where the greenery is. I did the other colors where the florals were. And then I have this rectangle piece that will be my background that I did, that I just kind of used up all the excess um, ink smushing on. I set that aside. I've zoomed in here. And now I'm just doing very, very simple watercoloring. Like, I, I can't stress this enough. <laughs> this is simple. I am, I just, I'm scribbling on these markers. I'm using the exact same colors. I'm just scribbling on the colors and then pulling them out with a water brush. And then with the um, rose images, I do keep kind of going back a bit with the darker. This is the pale pink color and adding a bit more of that because I wanted more of those like pinky peachy tones to these florals. So I just scribble a bit more of that, pull it out, go on to the next one. Like the beauty of something like this with an image that has been heat embossed and that's also a floral specifically is you're just filling in the lines. You know, I'm not worried about like light sources, sh shading, shadows, um, you know, anything like that. It's like, I'm just adding some color. And the, the reason I did all that ink smushing, even though I'm kind of covering it up and whatnot, is it just kind of removes that need to be perfect, you know, because there's just splotches and splatters everywhere, which you guys, if you guys have watched my videos, you know, 
I love, I love the splotchy splatteriness, but it also adds a little bit of texture and the bits that also kind of peek out around the images because I am going to die cut this, but the, it'll still preserve like some of that um, ink smushing. So you could always skip that and just do the background as ink smushing, but you guys know, I just, I like the texture. So I did the florals with that, the yellow and the, what they call a skin too. I just see this as like a light peach and then um, pale pink. And then the greenery was that cool aqua and lime green and same thing, slapped on the color with the marker, pulled it out with my water brush. Simple, 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 simple. I love it. Once um, I was done with this, I let it dry. Oh, and I used the um, pale pink marker just to fill in the little berry images. So I guess this time I stepped out of the box. I didn't color them purple because <laughs> I mentioned that in a recent video too. Anyway, I still wanted to add because because I did lose some of that texture from the ink smushing. I'm just going to add it back in. So I took my acrylic block, scribbled on that mar pink marker, took my fan brush that I dipped in water, and then just drug the fan brush against the edge of the acrylic block to add some splatter. So this will add a little bit of color but more than anything it will just create like kind of water droplet effects which will add splatter what was left on the acrylic block splattered that on the background and it was good to go so then I let these dry which didn't take very long and then I used the coordinating wafer die for the forever yours stamp set to die cut the floral and I also die cut the background with a rectangle wafer die to be smaller than my a2 card front and then I still had the image in my misty so I took my card base, which is going to be a top folding white A2 size note card. So four and a quarter by five and a half. Put that in my Misty and just line it up with that image. And then I'm inking up the stamp with Simon's Blush ink. I'm going to stamp that. And then I can take that stamp, just out of my, like clean it off, take it out of my Misty. And then I have um, the CZ Design Hi There Greetings set that I'm just kind of obsessed with and I have this scrap of coral cardstock I just flipped through my little scrap bin and I was like "Ooh, this color kind of goes with the colors I use so that's perfect so I stuck the scrap in there use my anti-static powder tool I'm going to ink up this sentiment twice because the hello word is so solid I want to make sure I stamp it solidly this I'm embossing with white embossing powder. The the florals, I did Simon's cream embossing powder because I really like the cream with watercolor paper. It just almost lends itself to that no line sort of a look, kind of. But again, you can use white embossing powder. In the end, it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, heat emboss the image. Let it cool down for a second or two. Wiped off the excess anti-static powder with my microfiber cloth. And then I used the coordinating wafer die for this one to die cut it. And then I have another sentiment from that same set. I'm going to line that up just kind of right above those florals that I stamped on the inside of the card. And I'm going to ink this up with Simon's Surf ink. So kind of pulling in that like aqua color that I used on um, the front of the card. So stamp that. Once that's stamped, I die cut my sentiment and then to adhere everything, I'm going to use Simon's Big Mama foam tape because this tape is nice and thin, so it doesn't add a ton of bulk, but it gives me a little bit of dimension. So I coated the background with that and then I kind of use that as my guide. I've just flipped over the florals there so that I don't get the foam tape past the edges of everything because it'll make it easier when I go to trim off whatever is hanging over. And I put foam tape on the back of this as well, because again, this foam tape is nice and thin. So I can do, you know, multiple elements popped up and it's not going to make this card like super bulky. So I'll get the background adhered to the card front. Once that's adhered, I can then adhere that floral. You could always leave off trimming. I know some people, it really bugs them <laughs> when I cut parts of like my images off. Honestly, doesn't phase me in the least. However, if it really bugs it, you could just use a larger envelope. It's fine. But I just trim them off so it fits in an A2 envelope. Plus, honestly, when you cut images off, your brain naturally just finishes it when you're looking at it. Anyway, anyway, use the edge of the card to trim off the parts that were hanging over. And then I just tucked that sentiment right in there and adhered that with just some craft tacky glue. And of course, 
of course I had some matching bling. It took me about two seconds going through my stash and I was like, oh, this one's perfect. This is the Trinity Stamps Topaz Twinkle Embellishment Mix. So I just put a few of those onto the card front and then I'll just adhere those into place with little dabs of craft hockey glue. And then once those are adhered, this card is complete. So just another way to use your Karen Brush Marker Pros or any water-based sort of marker. Um, as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post and I'll have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies I used. You can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, thumbs upping, commenting. It really does help a ton. Subscribe if you haven't. I'd very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.